Hi, it's Andrew here from Home Theatre Engineering and it's great to be back with you. It's been a while since our last video, so I'm sorry. Um, we've been busy. Um, I've actually been in Tasmania building another cinema for a client, fantastic people and um, great outcome. So I'm excited about that. Came back to two weeks quarantine over Christmas and New Year, would you believe? And then we had our first holiday in two and a half years. So um, we've had a bit of time off, uh, a little bit refreshed and we're back at it. Today, we're gonna to talk about uh, getting images onto a scope screen. So this is something we talk with our customers about a fair amount, and um, there are quite a few different options out there. So what I'm talking about today is, and I'm, we're gonna boil it down to some simple things. Now, there are different um, uh, 4K um, resolutions, um, but we're just gonna say 16 by nine. And scope screen could be anything 2.35, 2.37, 2.39, or 2.40 to one, but it's that nice big cinematic screen that you see you know this massive cinema scope uh, and that's the way you know a lot of hollywood movies are shot so the thing is um when we're watching a 16 by 9 image on our scope screen well that's kind of easy we just fit you know zoom the image and fit it onto the screen and we've got a 16 by 9 image on the screen it looks something like this the question comes you know what do you want to do when you want to watch a hollywood blockbuster and how do you manage that so um, a lot of projectors these days have a zooming function. So what you do is you hit the zoom button and you zoom your image out until the edges of that image um, fit the screen. Um, so at the beginning, of course, it's quite a small image sitting inside of that 16 by nine box on the screen. So we zoom it out and it fits um, and, and life is good. Except what's actually happening is this. Um, so even though you've zoomed out to the side of the screen, the top and the bottom of that 16 by nine chipset that your projector is or has is now off the screen. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of pixels and it's roughly 30% of them that are actually not being used. So we lose 30% of our pixels off the screen. We lose quite a bit of light output because that area now, the light's actually being sort of directed into the projector and, and not used. And also um, those pixels on the screen, of course, have got bigger and bigger and bigger because we've zoomed. So you don't have that sort of super sharp, super crisp resolution that you'd have with your 16 by nine image. For a lot of people that's acceptable, but you wanna have a fairly nice high light output projector. You want it to have good pixel structure and that all makes a difference to how neat and clean you know, the image looks. Another thing that makes a difference is the quality of the lens. So that zooming. The next option is an anamorphic lens. Um, and so you can get these, put them in front of your projector. They cost in Australian dollars between five and $10,000. I mean, they certainly can cost a whole lot more. There's some really nice sort of ISCO lenses and stuff like that out there. Um, and obviously the better the lens, the better the optics, um, the better the picture quality. The lens can be fixed in front of the projector. It can be put on a movable manual sled, or it can be on a motorized sled. Why would we do that? Well, because, um, and I'll explain this shortly, but when you are trying to watch a 16 by nine image and you leave the lens in front of the projector, there's actually some distortion that goes on. So the best of both worlds is actually to move the lens in and out all the time. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, that's a bit of a pain. Um, and people sort of say, well, I don't mind watching my 16 by nine with a little bit of a compromise on it. So, um, but my Hollywood blockbusters, then I'm getting all of my pixels. So how does that work? Okay, so what happens first of all is when you get your, your um, scope movie, as uh, before, that sits in the middle of your 16 by nine frame. The first thing that happens is you hit a button on your projector and your projector stretches it up and it looks something like this. So all of your people and your structures in the, in the, in the image are now stretched vertically. Uh, we haven't done anything horizontally yet and uh, that's when we apply the lens. So the lens comes in and now, voila, the image fits the screen. The beauty of this over zooming is that we've used all of our pixels and all of our light output. We have stretched some of the pixels on the side um, and we have electronically distorted the image. But when you think about it um, in Hollywood, often when they make movies, they use an anamorphic lens, which actually sort of compresses that image onto the frame. We're sort of reversing that. Um, and you know the only sort of rub is that we're actually stretching that image up um, to fill the chipset. But all of our light, all of our pixels, 
and probably the best way um, other than one of watching um, scope movies with a 16 by 9 projector so that's option two however along comes a company like um, Barco and I, I don't know I haven't seen anyone else do this I, it'd be interesting if you know of any other native cinema scope projectors let me know but Barco have uh, a range of native CinemaScope projectors. Now these things are 5,000 pixels wide, actually 5,120 from memory, um, but the magic of this is that A, you don't have to zoom, you don't have an anamorphic lens. So when you show 16 by nine with a native CinemaScope projector, you get all of your 4K pixels. You get your 4K image slap bang in the middle of your screen. No loss, no issues, no mess, no fuss. Perfect. Then when you go to a Hollywood um, scope movie, um, something that's filmed in CinemaScope, for example, um, then the uh, projector just goes, oh, I've got extra pixels. And it just expands that image to fit and uses um, all of the pixels. The beauty of that is that the pixel ratio or, or, or resolution that you had with your 16 by nine image hasn't changed for your bigger image. The same number of pixels per area of the screen. So the image is crisp and clean and looks great. And you're using all of your light output. So no lens, um, no distortion in 16 by nine. The uh, 235 image has been um, programmed to fill the chipset. And so that's it. Um, it's in our um, minds, probably the very best way of seeing um, uh, scope and 16 by nine on a on a scope screen the only thing is these projectors can generally sense the incoming signal so they know whether it's a 16 by 9 2.35 2.37 um, and and various other aspect ratios and they can adjust the image on the screen to to, to you know to display that image properly um, the only thing is that they don't do it instantly um, so we recommend that you have this with a video processor for several reasons, because a video processor, someone like a Loom, something like a Lumigen or a Mad VR, allows you to do more advanced um, control of your image. It allows you to add a LUT or lookup table calibration, which means you can get some amazing results. It, it has some dynamic tone mapping, so you can, you can actually um, see an image um, in, in a lot more sort of detail, in not in terms of resolution, but in terms of color definition and, and mapping that color to your projector far more accurately. The only thing is, um, as per a previous movie we shot, if you have this constantly changing aspect ratio in movies, um, as you get with Christopher Nolan or, you know, in the Eternals recently, um, then that's a problem because you get this laggy change and um, that happens with the projector, it happens with a Lumigen. Um, the only real solution to that, I think, is the Mad VR, which does do that change instantly. Um, we shot a video on that not too long ago, and uh, we got a bit of flack. Someone sent an email around the industry and said that, you know, um, you know, you shouldn't listen to us, go listen to some professionals. And they said that um, we were recommending people don't, you know, follow a movie, and, and when we're saying don't watch it the way the director intended. That's not what we said at all. In fact, in that video, I said, please, you know, we recommend you watch the movie as the director intended. The interesting question is, what did the director intend? And we've got a whole new video coming out on that. Uh, and that's really interesting. In fact, I've done a lot of research, spoken, spoken to a lot of people in the industry um, here and in America, and um, sort of tried to get to the bottom of what did the director intend in the first place? And how do they watch it when they're assessing making the movie? Anyway. The point being is that um, by using the uh, tone mapping and uh, instant aspect ratio changing, then you can watch whatever that content is on that disc pretty much as it was intended. Um, and then you have to decide whether those um, aspect ratio changes were what the director intended in the first place. That's interesting. So here's the thing. Other than the Barker Residential CinemaScope projectors, I'm not aware of any other projectors that make life kind of easy. Um, you either have to zoom in and out or buy an anamorphic lens or do some sort of jiggery pokery to fit these different aspect ratios on your screen. It's 2022, folks. Let's have a range of projectors out there that sort of start to play catch up and give us, you know, and, and all of us and, you know, the guy in the street and the people who can afford it, 
a projector that can deal with these aspect ratios, that, that doesn't need constant zooming, that doesn't need you to go out and spend $10,000 on a lens when you'd rather buy a car. You know, so, you know, step up, you know, give us this technology so that uh, all of our customers can enjoy um, multiple aspect ratios uh, in, in a much, um, much simpler form without, you know, massive investment um, or a lot of mucking around with remote controls and teaching your family how to recognize different aspect ratios and whether the lens should be in or out and, and all that kind of stuff and without compromising the images so much. We've got to be able to do this. So let's see who gets there first. You know, is it going to be Epson? Is it going to be Sony? Is it going to be JVC or is Barco Residential just going to stay out the front as they have for quite some time now? So there you go. I hope I've explained the difference between zooming, the difference between using an anamorphic lens, and probably the very best option, um, which is a native CinemaScope projector. Our choice um, for getting the best image on the screen and one of the most pleasing images I think I've ever screened without seen without going to super, super high end projectors um, is, you know, with a, a, a Bragi or a Boulder CinemaScope projector matched with a Mad VR. Um, other than that, you then go up to things like the Freya and, you know, ones that are starting to border on being what they call DCI. Now, the interesting thing there is that, just as an aside, a DCI projector, it's a very sort of locked in format. OK, um, DCI says, no, this is the way your projector is going to be. You're not going to have any scaling. You're not going to have any of this. You're not going to have any of that. There's not going to be aspect ratio changes. So what happens is if you have a DCI projector and you want to watch um, a scope, then you zoom the projector out, you lock it there and you manage it that way. Um, so that's kind of interesting, probably another discussion all on its own and um, a vast majority of you won't be using those type of DCI projectors. You're talking sort of $100,000 plus on average. So there you go. Um, I would love to get your feedback on this. Uh, you know, all of these options are valid and all of them come at different price points. So, you know, ask questions, make some comments, love to get your feedback. And uh, hopefully this has been useful to people to understand the difference between zooming and using an anamorphic lens and native cinema scope. Um, and you know, your choice of quality and your choice of budget will decide where on that spectrum you fit. Um, thanks again. I, I want to thank everybody for again, supporting our channel, really appreciate it. Um, and uh, please, uh, it means a lot to us. If you can just take two seconds and hit the, um, the like and the subscribe button, ring the bell so you get the notifications. And next time we've got a video coming out, obviously, you know, you're going to know about it. So, all right, guys, thanks again. And we will talk to you very, very soon.